so what we're going to learn today it has a rather complicated name. It's called inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics is basically a fancy way of saying skeleton system. We're going to use uh, Flash's version of giving a character or a guy that you're going to draw a series of bones. And those bones will allow you to rotate body joints and, and limbs and stuff like that in, in what is, you know, pretty much a natural manner. It obviously doesn't work exactly like real life, but the principle is, is still the same. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a, a new file here. And as usual, I will always go to my properties tray and I will um, <clears throat> change my resolution to, you know what, I'm going to work in uh, high def today. So 1280 by 720. I do that just to kind of get you guys used to the fact that you can do just about anything you want in Flash as far as the resolution is concerned. Okay, and it's important to kind of understand uh, what your um, what your target audience is going to be. You know what your what your target is going to be. If you just want to make a DVD, then do 720 by 480, which is standard def DVD. If you're uploading for YouTube or something like that, well, now that YouTube is a lot of HD videos everywhere, uh, 1280 by 720 is pretty good. You could even do 1940 by 1080, uh, 1920 by 480, I think it is, uh, for uh, 1080p high def. You know, whatever you want. And then I'm also going to change my frames per second from 24 to 30. Okay, there we go. That <clears throat> and that sets me up for. Uh, the guy. Now, the first thing I've got to do is I'm going to just make him. Now, the way that this works is you have to make each limb separately, and each limb has to be a symbol. So, right now, I'm just going to preface this whole thing with saying every body part has to be a symbol. If you don't do that, this does not work the right way. You can do a, a skeleton system and inverse kinematics inside a shape. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. Um, however, it works very differently than inverse kinematics uh, on multiple symbols. So, and, and you can mix the two. I've had students mix the two for really good results. But in this case, we're going to um, just uh, uh, do separate symbols. I'm also going to make this guy uh, very simply out of um, rectangles for now. And then we can modify the symbols later and make him more complicated uh, as we go along. So uh, the first thing, I'm going to draw a guy from the side. I'm going to make him run. Okay, So that's what we're going to be doing with this, with this little project. We're going to make a guy run across the screen. Okay, um, So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, draw the torso. And it's just going to be a, a box. And the other cool thing about drawing stuff in Flash is this is all vector-based graphics. So that means he's scalable. So whatever you make, as long as it's, it's a shape layer, basically, um, you can scale them up or down, and you will never lose any quality uh, in the image. So it's rather nice. So there we're going to do it. Now, the way I'm going to build him, he's actually kind of fat here. We're gonna, let's, let's skinny him down. So I'm going to grab my free transform tool, and I'm just going to skinny him down a little bit. Uh-oh, what did I just do? I didn't highlight the whole thing, I guess. Didn't get this. I didn't get the stroke. So now we've got a torso, essentially. Right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw him. We're drawing him from the side, but I'm going to put it like, like an Egyptian, where he's got his, his one arm is out to the back and the other arm straight out to the front. And I'm going to do the same thing with the legs kind of going out as an, uh, like an upside-down V. And the reason for this is you need to be able to, um, <clears throat> you need to, be able to uh, highlight each body parts separately okay, uh, to make them into symbols. Or you can make them into symbols as you go along. It doesn't really matter, um, I, I guess. So I'll just highlight this, and I can right click, and I can say convert to symbol. And I'm just going to, now this is really important. I notice some of you guys are being real lazy with your symbols. You're not naming them. Name your symbols. So torso, okay. I know what this is now. Right? I know that it's the torso. That's going to become really important in your library once you start getting a whole ton of symbols in here, especially symbols within symbols and duplicates of symbols. Holy cow. You will lose 
track of all this very quickly. I speak from experience, both my experience personally of losing track of symbols and also watching students get hopelessly lost. I'm not kidding you. I've had students almost in tears because I can't help them because I don't know what symbols what either. And their animation has completely exploded on them and they don't understand why. It's been four weeks of work and just today they made one little mistake because they didn't name all their symbols. They used the wrong symbol and the whole thing just blows up in their face. I don't want that to happen to you. So please, I'm not saying this just because all teachers say you need to be organized. I'm saying it because you will be sorry later on in the process if you do not name your symbols. Okay? Okay. So, I've just made a symbol. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a new one. Something interesting is going to happen here. There we go. <clears throat> and you can see it's a, that's an arm. We got it. It's still a little bit big, but again, we can change it. And I'm going to um, <clears throat> go and create a symbol. And I'm going to call this my, let's just call it uh, left upper arm. So I forgot a letter. There we go. Left upper arm. Boom. Now I'll make the forearm. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again. Make the forearm. It's a little smaller this time. And notice I'm putting him apart. And the reason for that is when I go to the arrow tool to select my, to select him, I don't want to, I want to be able to just select this. If I accidentally select, see how this symbol is selected? If I now right click and create a new symbol, it's going to put both of them inside the same symbol. We don't want that. Each one has to be in an end of, in each one has to be in its own individual symbol. So I cannot accidentally select this symbol or else I'm in trouble. So now I'll go, <coughs> convert to symbol, and we'll call this left lower arm. Okay, there we go. So now we've got two. <coughs> now, I'm not going to go and draw my other arms because I've already got two right here. And I can duplicate them pretty easily, okay? And then there's a real big benefit to that. What might be the benefit to that? If I duplicate my symbols instead of trying to redraw them. What's that? They're going to be symmetrical. It's going to be the same size. He's going to look a little weird with one arm being a little bigger than the other. Now, maybe that's what you want for your character and, you know, okay. But Generally speaking, that's not the way things work. You want the arms to be the same size. So I'm going to be smart here and I'm going to duplicate my symbol. So I can do this by duplicating the symbol here and it's going to ask me what I want to name it. Okay, And I don't want to name it left upper arm copy. I want to name it, what do you think? Right upper arm, exactly. Left upper arm copy might work but then, which one's really the left arm, which one's really the right arm? That could become very important later on. So it's good to actually name it right upper arm. And there we go. And there should be two symbols here. No, there's not. Crap. All right, no big deal. It's in, it's in the library. So I can just take it and drag it from the library. Voila. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with the, uh, the forearm. You can also do it um, here. So I can right click and I can um, duplicate the symbol in the library and we'll do the same thing. We don't want to call it left arm copy, we want to call it right lower arm copy. And then I just drag it right out. Sweet. Okay. Now, legs. Same basic idea. So I'm going to draw a rectangle for the thigh and then one for the calf. And then we're just going to do a block foot for now, like this, okay? Not going real fancy here. We want to get the motions down. And again, here's the cool thing about the symbol. We can now go in and alter the symbol later on and give this guy jeans, pockets, uh, you know, buttons, uh, wrinkles on his clothing. We can do all that later. We can do that after we've done the animation. We can go back in and start altering these... Um, these symbols uh, and altering the look of them from the inside out and never once touch our animation again. It's pretty cool how they, how they work. So um, 
get my black arrow tool. Here we go. Right click. You get the idea, but I just want to get this done. Convert symbol. We'll call this left thigh. Be very careful not to select anything that you don't want in that symbol. Left shin. And left foot. Well, it doesn't matter because we're going sideways. Remember, we're looking at it, trust me. We're looking at them sideways, so it doesn't matter which one it is right now. To be honest with you, we're going to have to reorganize them and order them later anyway, okay? So now, <clears throat> I'll be able to duplicate these. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to duplicate my left foot. Huh? That's a good movie, by the way, my left foot. Anyway, um, right foot, done. And I'm just going to drag that out here. We're just going to assemble this leg over here. Um, and now I need my right shin. So um, duplicate. Right shin. And there's my right shin. There we go. Drop that in there. And uh, left thigh, duplicate. Here we go. This is the last one. Oh, we, we need something else, don't we? What do we need? Yeah, thank you. Somebody, somebody's watching. We need a head. And you know what? We're going to do a hand, too. I'm going to put hands in here. So first things first, let's do, uh, let's do two hands. So I'm just going to grab a square here. Boom, there's a hand. Now this one's going to be my right hand because I remember that my right ones were over here. Um, just want to keep them all together for now. Again, as I said before, it doesn't really matter. We're going to have to reorder them anyway. So then I'll just duplicate it here. and drag it back out. And now what do we need? We need a head. Okay, so I'm going to just make a, uh, a circle. Shift key, remember, keeps it nice and even. Right click. All right, so now we've got our guy. Okay, now we've got our guy, basically. It doesn't look like a guy yet, but we've got our guy. So now what we can start doing is we're going to start adding the bone tool to the guy to give him the, the system that allows us to start making him move. When I finish this, you guys are, I mean, literally, some of you are going to be like mouth open, like, that is so cool, okay? So watch. Um, <clears throat> always start in the center. There is, it, it is important where the bones start. We want to start from the chest, okay? We want to start in the torso area. I'm going to go over here, and we've got the bone tool right here, okay? There's a couple. The bind tool only works when you're using the bone tool on a shape. Since we're using the bone tool on symbols here, it doesn't do anything, really. So we'll just ignore that tool for now. So I'm going to start at the center, and I'm going to draw, click and draw, and you can see now it gives me a little green bone. Okay? Now I'm going to go and I'm going to draw to this. And I'm just going to draw the center of each object. Now that's going to look weird at first, but we'll, we'll modify this a little bit later um, because where the little circles are is where your rotate points are, the, where the, uh, the symbol is going to rotate around. Obviously, we don't want the, the, um, the upper arm does not rotate around the middle. It rotates around the shoulder, right? So uh, we're, we're going to modify that in a second. So then I'll just go here and I'll go here. Now, I want to call your attention to something. Look what's happened it automatically created a new layer called Armature 2. So I'm not sure why it's Armature 2. It should just be regular Armature 1. I haven't made an armature yet, but that's okay. And all my symbols that have become part of the armature, okay, are in this layer. All the symbols that are not part of the skeleton system yet are down in layer 1. I can prove this to you, not that you thought I was lying, by just turning off layer 1, and you can see that all the symbols that are now part of our skeleton system, they're all in armature layer, and all the ones that ha I haven't connected yet, those are still in layer one. So now I'm going to continue connecting them. So let's go back down here. Just draw to the center of each object. If you try to get fancy, you're going to be sorry. Don't draw this leg to this leg. Go back to the center like this. Okay, so now Watch what I can do. This is kind of fun. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab my uh, black arrow tool here. 
and I click off, and now I can start to move. Okay? Now, right now, two things are happening. Number one, we do not want the legs and the arms to become dislocated. Right? So one of the important things is we do not want this center point to ever rotate. Because if we do that, then this arm will always come out of its socket. So we don't want this center point to rotate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on any one of these bones, and you'll see that the center is, is, is green. You see how that center is green right there? Okay. And then what I can do is go over to my properties tray, and you'll see joint rotation. It's enabled right now, which means the joint is allowed to rotate. If I uncheck that, now that joint, notice, does not have a little circle around it like all the others do. And now, notice that my arm does not move up and down like it did before. It won't come out of its socket. Very handy. Very, very handy. So what we're going to do, now we need to set our objects. We need to put them in place. And we need to set the rotate points to be the correct, in the correct place as well. <clears throat> this is going to get a little tricky for two reasons. One, I can't look at, I can't use the, if I use the black arrow tool, okay, it just starts rotating them. What I need to do is I need to use a new tool that you guys haven't used before, and that's the free transform tool. If you modify an inverse kinematic set with the free transform tool, Notice the bones go away. I want you all to take a look, actually. So first I'm going to click this. Memorize real quickly, if you will, where the bones are. See that? Now watch what I'm going to do with the tree transform tool. I'm going to put my shoulder in here like this. And I'm going to move each one of the objects. And then I'm going to click, and you see the, um, you see the center point there? I'm going to move that center point over. That center point is the joint of the bone. Now, when you're doing this, you want to be very careful. You'll notice the free transform tool will also allow you to stretch things. You can skew objects like this. There's a bug in Flash that doesn't allow you to undo that. The skew, specifically. I don't know why. It drives me insane. So you just want to be very careful that you are only clicking on the center. And you can tell that you're doing that. See how the arrow has a little circle around it? That's telling me that I'm moving the circle there. I'm moving that point. So now, take a look at what happens here. Go back to the black arrow. Look at my bone structure. Oh, it's a lot different. And now, he's moving a lot more naturally, isn't he? Isn't that cool? So let's do the other side. Now, you're going to notice something here. So I'm going to go back to my free transform tool. Ah, oh, something's wrong here. This is going to look a little weird. Let me modify the points and then let's talk about why this looks weird. If I'm viewing this guy from the side, what's wrong with this arm? Yeah, both arms are on, it should be behind his body. Now let's take a look. Which way is he facing, left or right? Let's just say left. Okay, that's pretty standard. So just because we are in America, we read right to left, or left to right, and we read right to left. We read left to right, so that would make sense. So if he's facing, if he's facing um, to the left, I said this was his right arm, okay, and this was his left arm. If that's true, then this right arm should be the one that's behind his torso. It doesn't really matter which one is, but if you called it right arm, you should be consistent, make it his right arm. So if he's facing to the left, we don't have any eyes or anything on there. We're going we're gonna, to um, uh, drop these on the back. So here's what we can do, ready? It's actually pretty cool what we can do. Um, we're going to send them back. So I can, with the modify tool, I can right click on my object, okay, and I can go to arrange, and I can send them backwards. 
If you send them backwards, they just go back one at a time. So you can see that actually worked. Or if you just want to send it all the way back, you can send, just go send to back. So if you notice, if I say send backward, um, now it's, it's kind of working. But here's the thing to be mindful of. Make sure you do it with everything, because they can have different layers that float amongst everything. So right now, his arm is behind his head. That's good, but the hand is not. And if I bring the hand down here, the hand also will go in front of his body. So you have to be really careful with what you're doing here, okay? So again, right click, send backwards. Okay, so now I take a look at this. Now it's moving the way I would expect it to. You also want to double check this with the legs. Okay, which will become really important as you're starting to animate. You don't want the hand to come in front of one, the, either of the legs, probably. All right, so let's set up the legs here. Now, this one was my right leg here, uh, and then this one was my left. So I wasn't very con con uh, consistent when I did this. But let's set our, let's, whoops. Now, right here, I just did something. I accidentally double-clicked, and it put me into the symbol. Did you see how everything else went gray? So I just want to get back out of the symbol here. So now I'm going to take the free transform tool and I'm going to set up my legs so that they bend in the right manner. Okay, now this setup here, what I like to do is just to make it easy on myself, I will offset the legs a little bit so that they are not identical, okay? That just makes my life a little easier when I need to select them. Um, and then I'm gonna show you another trick in just a second. We're gonna add an, a helper that's gonna help us find the legs and so on and so forth. But first, what I'll do now is I can grab this, okay? Now this one is my right leg here, so we wanna bring that one back. So I'm gonna do the same thing I just did and I'm going to say send backwards. If I say send all the way back, then what's going to happen is it's going to be behind the arm. We don't want to do that. So I'm just going to say send backwards. Now I need to go send backwards again because notice it went behind the left leg, but it didn't go behind the body. So sometimes you've got you to do it multiple times. And that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look at this. Let's just see how these move. Okay, so that goes behind. That goes behind. It stays behind the arm. That's important. I know that looks really uncomfortable, but it's, it's important to really test. Oh, oh, see, here's good. See, my hand goes through the leg. We don't want that. So what, what do you think I need to do with this arm? Bring it forward. Thank you. So we're going to, and this one, I'm just going to send to front because I want it to be the first thing. Absolutely. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> bring them to the front. <clears throat> All right. So now this arm goes in front of everything. That's good. Even the head. Excellent. Now we want to check out this arm here needs to go behind everything, and it does. That's good. Oh, yep, it does. That's excellent. And this leg should go in front of everything except the arm. Excellent. Yes, they're very flexible, our, our, uh, our guys. Yes, they are. But now, hopefully what you can see is, man, you, can, you could really start animating a guy running. Look how easy it is. You just have to grab the foot and start to move it. Now, if you don't want the foot to rotate, but you want to grab and rotate the knee, then instead of grabbing the foot, you grab the calf. See, and now the, the foot stays the same angle. So what body part you click on to rotate, that actually does make a difference. If you click on the calf, then whatever is be beyond the calf, like the foot, does not rotate. The other thing is sometimes it's kind of hard to control the feet and the hands. So what we're going to do is we're going to add really quickly in the last couple minutes of the demo, I'm going to add um, 
a helper object. These helper objects are really important. Now, there's a very important concept that's going to happen here really quickly. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. I'm just going to grab a circle and I'm just going to draw a circle and get an error. It says, the current layer is an inverse kinematics layer which does not support drawing. If I want to draw new objects, like a neck for this guy because I didn't put a neck in here, okay, I can't do it on the IK layer. I have to go back to layer one, which if you'll notice is now clear because it's empty. So I'm just going to click on layer one and I'm going to draw a circle. <clears throat> now I'm going to take that circle and I'm going to name it or convert it to a symbol and I'm going to call it helper object. Now I'm just going to duplicate this by holding the option key down and dragging it. What that does is that creates copies of the same symbol. It's not a different symbol now, it's the same symbol, but in this case, we don't need it to be different. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my bones tool here. So I'm going to go back to the bones tool and I'm going to click and I'm going to, whoops, drag, ah, There, no, come on. Sometimes you might have to move one of your objects out to get this done, which kind of stinks, but that's okay. Come on, what's the key to, oh, bone tool's M now, it used to be X. There we go, see, now it works. Jerk, okay, and then there, that one worked. That one worked. Bring this here. No, it's M. Ah, you know what it is? I think it's because the hand is behind the, um, I think it's because the hand is behind the, uh, the forearm. So we're just going to bring forward one. There we go. I bet you it works now. Yeah, see? Okay, well, that, there you go. So learn something with the object is behind it and the joint is behind another object, uh, another symbol, it's going to be really hard. So now I've got these, um, these helper symbols. Oops, I forgot the one for the head. Um, so now I've got these helper symbols. And you might go, yeah, wh what are those supposed to do? Well, watch. This is, this is what's really cool. So now I'm going to take the, um, the black arrow tool and I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to highlight all five of them. Okay? And then... I'm going to go over here to color effect. I'm going to choose alpha, which is the same as opacity. And I'm going to set the alpha of those objects to zero. Now they're invisible. But what they do is they give me the ability to control my guy a little bit better. See? And if those things spin around like crazy, it doesn't really matter. I can even move them around. Get my foot back in where I wanted it here. And now I can control my feet and my hands and the head a lot better. Now, what's interesting here is <laughs> I don't have a neck for this guy. So let's fix that one problem to finish up the demo, okay? We've just got a couple minutes left in class. So what I'm going to do... And this kind of stinks, you kind of have to start over a little bit, not the whole thing. I'm going to click on the bone with the black arrow tool and highlight it. See how that's highlighted? Now I'm going to hit the delete key. That deletes the bone. I'm going to move my, the head up a little bit. Now I've got to go back to layer one and we're going to draw a neck. So I'm going to go and get another rectangle tool. Draw a neck here like this. Get my black arrow tool. Highlight him, create a symbol, okay? Now I got to go back to my IK layer and I got to get on the, the major bone, the center bone here and draw to the neck, then redraw that to the head and then redraw that back to the helper. And then now I can use the, um, unit, the modify tool to put the joint of the neck down in there a little bit and now I can use it to 
bring the head here like this. Obviously, I need to rearrange the neck here, so right click, arrange, send backwards. No, nope, need to do it again. Since I created him last, guess what? He's going to be all the way at the front. Okay, now we're behind the head. That's good. Now we just need to go backward one more time. Now it's behind the body. So now this is going to work. And the rotate, of, the rotate point of the head is in a better place now, too. So if I go back to my IK layer and I start moving the head, it's going to move a lot more naturally. See that? Okay. And I can move the base of the skull or I can move the neck itself. There's a lot of different things that you can do to, um, to change the way the body works. So your job with this next assignment is basically just to create a block character like this. Don't get too fancy in the design of the body. Just do solid colors, that sort of thing. Make sure that he or she has hands, feet, shin, thigh, upper arm, lower arm, neck, and a head. Okay, We're, doesn't matter about the details. I'm going to show you how to add those later. And make sure that your character, your little dude, has helpers, invisible helpers. And then I'm going to show you how to start making him do what we call a walk cycle or a run cycle. Okay? Uh, we're going to get them running in place first, and then we're going to use the power of nested tweens to actually make him run across the screen. And by the end of the week, you will have a guy running across the screen. And it's not as hard or as complicated as it might look at first blush. Okay? It is pretty easy. Are there any questions over what we've gone over today? No? Excellent.